Hi, so we're going to look at this problem today, which is asking the conversion from non-deterministic to deterministic uh, Turing machine. And what we want to know is how much slower does it go? We saw in the intro series that it's just possible. Here we're going to give a bound on how long the deterministic machine runs in terms of the non-deterministic machine. So the theorem that we're going to prove here is that non-deterministic time, if you run in f of n time, or constant times that, then you're going to run in at most uh, deterministically 2 to the power constant times f of n here. And there could be a different constant here, but we're again, we're going to ignore constants. Here we're going to require that f of n be bigger than n, purely because if you don't read the whole input, then you don't really say a whole lot. So you want to at least read the whole input, which means you have to take at least n time. So uh, how is this actually uh, done uh, when we did the intro series? So what we did was we looked at these configurations and looked at the computation tree. So we looked at the starting configuration and we had some number of, of possible choices that we can make. Maybe there's one, maybe there's a whole lot. Let's just say there are four here. And each one of those can have a set of possibilities. Let's say this one has three, the second one has none, maybe this one has one, and this one has two. And then maybe it continues like this. Maybe this one has a lot. And of course, this can continue. So what we want to figure out is, let's say that an accepting node here is at depth uh, f of n. And we know that it's at depth f of n because the non-deterministic machine will make the right choice to be able to hit this node down here at the bottom. And so since it runs in f of n time, this is at depth uh, f of n. Actually, we should say it's, for complete correctness, it's f a uh, big O of f of n because uh, non-deterministic time ignores the constant here. So what this is saying is, okay, uh, we have depth here, which is big O of f of n. And what does the der deterministic machine do? Well, the way that we outlined it before is it explores this tree breadth first. So it will uh, look at all of these possible choices, and for each one of them, we're going to look at all the possible choices. So it's going to explore this thing level by level. And what we want to know is, uh, how many of these are we going to see before we inevitably end up down here? So the question is, well, what is the maximum number of leaves that a node can have? So what is the max number of leaves for a given config. And we don't know that necessarily because there are obviously a lot of determined uh, a lot of different non-deterministic machines. So let's give this a number. Let's call it D. So this is the maximum number of nodes in a uh, sorry, the maximum number of choices that can be made. So here we know that there's exactly one node at the top because there's only one starting configuration. Uh, here, there are at most D because there are at most D possibilities coming out of this start node. Maybe there are D or fewer, but there's at most D. Okay, so then here, uh, for the second level, each one of these possibly up to D nodes has up to D possible uh, leaves that that can come out of it. So here, this is at most d squared because it's d possibilities at most for the one and d possibilities for each of them. And so if we come down here, uh, once we get down to, let's go back to green. So down at this level, we have uh, at most d to the big O f of n. Okay, because um, and, and here it really is whatever this number is minus 1 because we started at 1, not D. But again, the constant will upstairs will save us here. But so you may think, okay, well, this deterministic machine runs in D to the big O F of N time, and you'd be right. But here in the theorem statement, I said that there's explicitly a 2 here, and that's independent of the D parameter. So 
the the question I want to answer is is d to the big O f of n equal to d uh, two to the power big O f of n question and the answer is uh, is in fact right so this is true and why is it true so we're going to assume without loss of generality that d is at least two because if it's one then it's a deterministic machine and we don't have to do this whole thing anyway so we'll assume that it's at least two so another way to rewrite uh, d to the k is the same thing as saying well, where k is just anything it could be anything is the same thing as saying two to the power log d uh, times k since uh, two to the actually this is log base two but honestly it's not gonna matter as we'll see so two to the log base two of d that just evaluates the d so we get this over here so what we get is that d to the let's call it c times f of n where the constant upstairs here is c I'm just giving it a name so then we'll just use our little trick right here. In fact, I'm going to change color here. So let's change this to green. And then we'll just use our little trick. So this says we have two to the log base two of D. That's what the D parameter is times C times F of N upstairs. And this may look horribly confusing, but let's see. So let, when we have a power and then outside power like this, we multiply the powers together. So this is the same thing as saying two to the C times log base two of D times F of N. And the crucial step here is this thing is a constant. And why is it a constant? So it's given the Turing machine, the D parameter is a constant. Okay, so we're measuring the runtime here based on the length of the input, not the machine itself. So this stuff right here is a completely a constant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this as C prime. So it's just a different constant times F of N. And since we have a constant upstairs, this is going to be two to the power big O of F of N. And this shows that the deterministic machine runs in at, at most exponentially slower than the, than the non-deterministic machine does. So the big question is, well, can you actually do faster than this? And unfortunately, in a particular sense, you can't actually do better than this. This simple result of just trying all possibilities, uh, just doing this uh, simple breadth first search exploration, we have no idea how to do it better after what 50 years of research we have no idea how to do better than this which is or we don't have a proof that you can't do better than this either we don't have any knowledge about whether you can do better than this or not so and the rest of the class the rest of this series is basically trying to understand why this is and a lot of other questions about whether you can or can't do something so hopefully that was interesting leave your thoughts about this conversion into the comments down below as always please like the video and subscribe to the channel it really helps us out there are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further and as always thanks for watching and i'll see you next time